Good evening. Welcome to another live RC Mel section uh, episode. Spit me words out. This is live. We leave all mistakes in. Now, I have wrote a little line here to introduce this episode, which is just like you. I do feel like it's a gamble when we buy RC kit online. And that is like the main motivation behind uh, me doing these RC Mail episodes, not only the ones which I do previously and the ones which I also do in the future, because it does feel like a gamble. Do we know if a product's good? Do we know if a product's bad? I don't know, but this is the cool thing, is that we can share our experiences as an RC community to find out what is good and also what is bad. And we'll get onto that one a bit later. That's the DVR-03, which is pants. Uh, which you may remember from the previous live session. So uh, quickly going back to my notes, which I've now lost, which I really have lost. Apologies, like this is live. Like I said, we'll leave all screw ups in. Uh, yeah, so uh, this way you get to see firsthand whether any of this car uh, RC kit is good or bad. Now there is a vote which goes along with tonight's RC session uh, is in the top get this right way around, top right hand corner, uh, there is a vote where you can um, <laughs> express what your addiction is like to RC because I'm fairly um, hook, line and tinker into it. Now there is time for us to quickly do a shout out. Now before we actually go there, I do want to know I've got about 14 packages here and this has been backing up since the last session. Uh, which we did so and, and that's what I'm trying to do now uh, is back up the mail and then we'll do the stuff live uh, now I do like to do a shout out corner so I'm just gonna ah oh, pants give me a moment I need to copy some settings like that and Walter apologies my internet dropped out there for a second uh, howdy Graham <laughs> fat ass bloke <laughs> good evening good evening John uh, and good evening Jim and also Jay uh, yes, we had uh, just had uh, a little internet drop out here, so obviously uh, apologies for that. Basically, if you've just said hello in the live chat, I've been and said hello to you as well. Same for you, Leonardo, as well. Uh, and so Dave is on as well, the Mank entrepreneur, who, by the way, is actually my business partner in the uh, daytime world as well, which I'm, you may or may not met previously uh, before. And Jazzy, thank you for the. Uh, a note on the audio quality. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through a collection of kit which I've been received here. I have actually been in the boxes and sneaked in and taken a look what's in this lot. Uh, there was a Runcam Eagle which also turned up, but I needed that for one of the builds. I needed that for that, which many of you know, that is the FPV pod for an EF Extra. Oh, I've still not maidened it. Thursday is maiden day for five models, maiden day on Thursday. I'm gonna to have to take a cameraman with me, hint, hint, Andrew. Uh, and good evening, Camel, and good evening, Kevin, uh, as well. So uh, with that said, there are links in the video description for you. I will give you an immediate heads up, I uh, would like a disclaimer, they are affiliate links as well. Now with that said, let's get into the first one. Uh, and like I did say, I have been in these and had a nose. Oh, actually, before we go into the packages, uh, yeah, Sunday, I've got an EF Extra with me. She sat over there waiting to be flown. Now, we have run, those of you which are not up to speed, uh, is the, it is the red version with 69 written on it, of course, and we had several votes over a couple of days, and it was determined that red is the fastest color. It's now a proven fact. Uh, and how do you road to master? Now, there was a message up in the chat uh, from Jazzy. Matt, is it possible when you are live for my, uh, my little boy, Alex, who destroyed, to say hello to Alex. So, hi, Alex, by the way. Uh, and I'd also like to say, well done. And you may be wondering why I'm saying well done. Uh, because Alex managed to destroy a Texumo uh, and, um, a cost his dad by the looks of it 200 quid good lad if you're not breaking stuff you're not trying hard enough and that's actually going to be a topic for this evening uh, so well done Alex so with that said let's get back to the screen now what you'll see up on my screen right now uh, is that I've been a really big fan of the Tower Pro MG90S servos the 
uh, if you've been around for a while, you know that they're just like my favorite cheapo servo because they're, they're cheaper than the cheap Hobby King plastic geared ones. Now, I took some servos out of the Phantom FX61. Uh, that one's just had some Corona 939 metal geared servos go in there, uh, and she's getting laminated, which is, to be honest, is about time she actually gets laminated, because uh, she's done, like, I dread to imagine how many miles in the sky, uh, and she's getting a complete refurb inside. Now, part of that refurb was to take out some of the servos. Now, uh, on one of the servos, I did pull the lead pretty hard trying to pull it out, uh, and I, that was going to be a bit iffy, I was going to use another model. So I did stick the screwdriver in it and uh, there was always this, uh, let me explain this one. I was in another Facebook group and they were slating the MG90S servos. Uh, and I wanted to call out BS on that. So I took one apart and that is the parts which, is, which are inside a Tower Pro MG90 servo. Uh, you'll notice that metal gears, metal gears, metal gears. Uh, the shaft, which you can't see because my head uh, is, that's the wrong one, my head is in the way. Uh, that is also a metal gear. The pinion here as well is also a metal gear. Let's get the uh, camera back too. Uh, also, I don't think you can see in that photo. Ah, in this one here, can you see that we've got the uh, brass or metal bushing as well? The O-ring which sits in there too. So, ow, that'd be a Stanley blade. Um, yeah, so Tower Pro MG90S servos, absolutely spot on. That is exactly the reason why I, I, I use them. And yes, I've broken those Tower Pro servos. Uh, and the reason why I've broken them, one, one of them, Andrew, who's on in uh, live with us right now, he flew one of his wings into one of my wings on the slope. Fair game. Straight in the servos, not a chance. Uh, I put my Weasel XP twice into some barbed wire fences. Uh, and then also walk, walking up to the slope with the slope sort of wings again, I put my elbow on them and that, that kind of jerking movement is really is going to kill servos. Uh, quick note on there, um, Leonardo says, when for more videos of the mini talent? That is a really, really good question. Uh, I still have not published the maiden of the FMS Edge 540, which is an absolutely fantastic model. It, that is the next one to get edited up and um, published. The next one which follows that will be the Mini Talon Maiden, uh, which went fantastically well. It is a brilliant model, and uh, those of you which don't know what the Mini Talon looks like, uh, I, I, actually I was wrong. Uh, I, when I first received it, I did say it was but ugly. Uh, and the more I worked on it, the more I kind of grew to like it. Uh, and it is a bit of a peg to launch, because it's one of those strange models where you have to launch it flat, and hard with about three quarters throttle. If you follow uh, that that launch flat and hard with loads of throttle, uh, you will never have any issues with it. And the same with the CG as well. You always make sure you always fly it so it's a little bit nose heavy. Uh, I think the issues with the Mini Talon came around in the first set of manuals which were released. Uh, they actually had the wrong CG point in there as well. Uh, let's have a quick look, what's going on chat? <laughs> Matt, let it go. Um, Brilliant. Right, so let's get on to the mail. So MG90S uh, servos, absolutely fantastic. Cheapest chips, cheaper than the Hobby King plastic ones. Uh, so the first bag which we've got this evening is, oh, brilliant. Now the reason why I'm, let's put these in the filing cabinet. Now the reason why I'm saying these brilliant is because I'm curious if any of you have been and bought any of these yet. Uh, and the reason why I bought them is because I've got the Team Legit Twin Zoo, which those of you which don't know what that model looks like, it's a twin motor bat poop crazy model. And I'm trying to moderate my language this evening uh, because I know there's youngsters on here with us. But for all intents and purposes, this is flight line chat. Uh, so anything which you discuss on the flight line is pretty much fair games. Uh, so let me see if I can get in here. They've really done a good job to take these up. Now, which ones were these? Ah, I believe they are these ones, which are the DYS fires. Now, the reason why I bought these is the, the previous DYS motors, which I had, were uh, DYS SE 2205s, 2300 kV motors, and they are just amazing. Uh, if you can get your hands on the SE 2205s, uh, go and grab some. They're not cheap, but Absolutely stonking motors, absolutely stonking. I've only got two left there. One of them I burnt out. Um, in short story, too big of a prop on it. 
uh, but they are absolutely brilliant. So this, they do look rather cool. Again, I need to put my hand behind so it actually focuses. There we go. Hollow shaft in their really cool design on the top. Uh, and they are the 2206s. Uh, so, yeah, they look like they can take a few amps. Nice big thick core windings in there. I've bought a pair of them. I believe they're both clockwise, uh, sorry, counterclockwise ones, which I bought. Uh, and the reason why I bought those is because I'm going to use the SC2205s uh, on the Twin Zoo. And I've also bought these to see if they're any good. Now, they are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. They are the they're $20 each. Uh, so they better be good, put it that way. Uh, and the reason why I went for the ones which better be good, uh, because I'm looking for speed, uh, in short. And uh, yeah, so if anybody's used any of these, do let us know um, in the chat. <laughs> uh, DYS Fire, yeah. Yeah, literally. Uh, the One of the previous ones, I pretty much set fire to it. Um, that's what you get for putting a 7-inch propeller, uh, propeller on them. So, yeah, those are earmarked for the Twin Zoo. We'll give, give those a roll and see what we've got. The next... Oh, more motors. Let's get in here and have a quick nose. Which ones are these? I think these are the MT-1806 motors. Yes, they are. Let me get one of these out so you can see what I've got. Now, the reason why I'm... Sh Again, the, the main reason why I'm do doing these mail sessions is that... I know, I'm sorry, I do not know if these D, uh, these DYS fire motors are any good at all. So I've been and bought a pair and I'll stick them on, on an obscenely ma uh, model and absolutely skank, spank the sky with them. Uh, and if we come down, in come down in flames, then we'll do an update on them later. But one motor, which I know is absolutely fantastic, and they're only diddy little things, and apologies for the lighting if you can't work that one, see that all right on there. Uh, is that is an Emax 1806. Uh, I believe, what are they, 2280 kV motors? So they're not massive powerhouses, but for a model, say, like the Minis, uh, not Sky Hunter, Skywalker, perfect motor. Absolutely perfect motor for those. Uh, and this one, these two motors are actually earmarked for a project which I'm working on at the moment. So they're going to get used very, very shortly. Uh, and they're they're absolutely brilliant. I think I have those up on my tabs here somewhere. No. 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 Ah, there you go. This is at the top. Uh, yeah, the little MT 1806 motors. They're absolutely fantastic. You can cruise around with just like a couple of amps on them. Brilliant. Little 60-30 propeller on them. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yeah, no worries at all, Jazzy. No worries at all. Uh, yeah, they are Emacs ones. Right. Uh, let's have a quick look. Sunday says, good old trusty DYS 1806. Had one in my Hornet for months uh, until I wanted more power. Yeah, Sunday, that's what... The, um, I've got two Hornet FPV flying wings. In fact, let me just go and grab... So you know the, the model which we're talking about is... And again, I'll put a link to this in the... Uh, Howdy Riff, by the way. Uh, let me just pop that in the chat in the live chat which goes along with this and I'll stick this on the screen. Uh, so this is a UK based company. Uh, I didn't like their Raven flying wing, if I'm 100% honest, and it's actually sat up behind my head and that's going to a new home. Uh, I did convert mine to FPV. I, to be honest with the Raven wing, uh, better value for money can be found in the Tech Sumo. Uh, but the Hornet FPV flying wing, literally go on to, well, I'll do this afterwards, uh, after this RC mail's over and done with, uh, go on to my YouTube channel, type in Hornet, uh, and then look up some of the flight footage we've got with the Hornet flying wing. Um, absolutely brilliant model and 25 quid. Uh, and that, those 1806 motors are the, the best motor to go on the back of them. Uh, flight time of a 1300 uh, milliamp for free S pack uh, is, depends how much you use the throttle. You can go anywhere from about six minutes if you're just full throttling uh, for the entire time. Uh, or you can get way beyond 10 minutes worth of flight time as well uh, with that motor. Very, very cool. Um, Sunday says, just got my mate to order one yesterday for his first flying wing. Mine's in the middle of getting replaced with an Apex. Oh, yeah. Sunday, you should check the Facebook group to see how well the maiden on my Apex went. And I can tell you, not very good uh, in short. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. 25 quid, the best training wing out there. 
for FPV anyway. It's light, it's small, it bounces pretty well. Uh, I know that I had receiver issues on mine. Oh yeah, by the way, do not put a VAR4 receiver in the wing. Uh, definitely do put a D4R uh, receiver in the wing uh, because it will get swamped. Uh, and it just doesn't have the range uh, on it at all. And when I say swamped, I mean it'll get swamped by the video transmitter. Uh, the, my pink one is I've got some D4R2s on the way to me at the moment uh, so that I can take the VAR4s or whatever they're called out and swap it over for a decent one in there. Yeah, crazy stuff. And um, Kev, thank you ever so much for the link. And howdy, Rich, as well. I'm trying to keep up with the names in the chat at the same time. Uh, yeah, Kev, you would like it. You would like it. And um, what also what I did on my uh, Hornet wing was I also put the hub OSD board in there as well. Uh, the first time around, it was a bit of a hack. The second time, I put it in before I glued the bottom of the fuselage to the wings. So it's really seamless. And I'll, if you want some photographs, I'll stick some photos in the Facebook group. Second time round was definitely better with that one. Uh, that's for sure. Ah! This was an eBay purchase, which I do have on one of my tabs. Uh, it's some nickel uh, plated steel w uh, wire. Now, the reason why I need that is because in the last Mel episode, which we did, I had I received some of these little black doodads, like so, uh, to line up 18650 batteries. And I needed, and I was waiting upon, some nickel Still, what it's nickel plated steel wire, or whatever it's called, uh, to go on the top so I can solder up some of my own uh, 18650 battery packs. Uh, so, yeah, that was not cheap at £10.99, uh, but that was also the best value pack which I could find uh, because there was other stuff on there and there's only like 50 centimeters. That pack was uh, 11 quid and it was two meters, so that's the reason why I bought that one. And it was not cheap in the scheme of things, but com cheap compared to the other ones which I saw. Uh, Prop Damage says, uh, what size 3S in the Hornet? 1300. Yeah, 1300. Uh, no, I fly, I, that's all I ever fly my Hornet with. Uh, the suggested battery is an 850. I bought three eight, uh, 850 milliampere 3S batteries to go in the Hornet. Uh, I think I've flown those like twice. Uh, and now I just stick a 1300 in it. And it flies great. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Peter, hold your horses on the Micro Sky Hunter uh, because we will get into that one in the, uh, in, the um, in a few minutes, I'm sure. So, Ad Street. Uh, Chris, hey, you made it. Welcome aboard, sir. Welcome aboard. And by the way, if you're watching the recorded version, uh, you actually, you'll see the chat above my head. So uh, you'll see who I'm chatting out to in the background. Uh, next package, we have a couple of servos. Now this does bring us nicely, as Peter just got us onto the topic a few minutes ago. Uh, these are some five gram, I'll put my hands over that so you can see they're not very exciting, but they are five gram servos. Now I know that I can buy these cheaper on Hobby King, but in my Micro Sky Hunter, when I ran it with the NTM 2836 3000KV motor with a 100 amp ESC uh, and uh, like a tri-blade, I think it was a 4045 tri-blade um, propeller on the back, which the raw footage again is on the YouTube channel, those servos put up with a model which had to be easily plus 100 miles an hour. And obviously I wasn't trying to do crazy stuff in it. Uh, when I was going that speed, but those little servos did cope with a model doing 100 miles an hour uh, easily. So I've been and bought three of those. Now you may be wondering why have I got three of these? Uh, is because a couple of days ago, and again, unfortunately, uh, like I share all my mistakes with you, uh, is that over on when we were out flying, I did clip the Micro Sky Hunter twice. Now the first time, I literally just knocked a branch, you know one of these ghost branches which you never see in the goggles, I just clipped the side of the tree and the model, I was like, throttle off and it just spiraled like that into the ground and that was fine, it was perfectly fine. The second time though, well actually the second time was kind of like the first time, I was getting a bit close. And then the third time, actually, I was into the Free Fat Ladies, which some of you may know that's free trees in one of our flying sites. Uh, and I came round, and this is where I made the mistake. I came round with the, went through the Free Fat Ladies, came up and around. And 
as normal, and that's the mistake which I made, there was a crosswind pushing, uh, coming across and the, the diagonally on the corner. And as I would normally do, was just cut round and then come back for a second go uh, at the Free Fat Ladies, uh, is that I came out what I thought was wi uh, really wide. By the time I'd realized what was happening, the wind had pushed the model across and I was lined up straight on for one of the Free Fat Ladies, which I'm so wrong. I'm sorry, that's not one of the trees. Uh, and then I throttled up, tried to get through it, uh, and I almost made it through on the micro sky. I've got a picture of it on here, so you know the model which I'm talking about. There, let me just move my head out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. So we've got the main wings uh, here on the model, and then we've got two beams, and then the elevator fin at the back. And literally, uh, it it was the, the rear elevator fin which just caught one of the branches, uh, and then it just spiralled into the ground. So throttle off down well there was no point pushing down um, but it was going into the ground and actually that's when I decided that I was really quite sad um, and I actually really do like the micro sky hunter so the micro sky hunter I don't know if you know that I've run a series on like the best models which you can buy for 50 quid or less or 65 USD uh, and that model is definitely going into that series I've had so many hours uh, in the sky with the micro sky hunter uh, it's just one of the best models out there. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, Zedtoon says, Matt, I know you're not enjoying building time so much, but it's time that you try hot uh, hot wire cutting and make yourself a nice wing. Uh, actually, um, I, I was going to ask Craig. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> totally. Uh, go for a really nice thin profile. Uh, something which I learned a couple of days ago. Uh, and I can't remember where I learned this to, was, oh, I think it might have been Sir Bruce, actually. Sir Bruce, yeah, it was, literally, with the mini um, uh, race wing, uh, is that the thicker the cord is the, the amount of power needed to push the model through the air to get the speed up uh, is basically exponential. You need m massive amounts of thrust to get over like a barrier, uh, like a speed barrier. So the thinner the cord, the faster the model goes, or the more, the you for the same amount of thrust you can make the model go faster so yeah absolutely oh andre have so andre's on uh, andre has any of your packages turned up um unfortunately a lot uh, actually in, in some instances on here there's been like two weeks two and a half weeks for some of these to turn up i know with the we'll get to one of the packages in a minute which is some wings uh, and they have been over two weeks to get to me because we have had the chinese new year uh, and those of you which don't know about the Chinese New Year, basically the whole of China shuts down for several days and then just everything gets backed up. Uh, and then Andre, I sincerely hope that they all just turn up in the post one morning. Um, oh, pants, my pants. And again, I'd, yeah, get on to uh, Banggood support for them. Uh, yeah, and see what they say. Because I think you have to wait 40 days with, and yeah, and Peter, I know yours was longer as well. Yeah, I, I'm, I just, I know that I've, I've had stuff which has taken a while to get here, but in reality, you, you kind of see how much we've just turned up here in a week. So far from Banggood, one item has not turned up, and it cost four pound fifty, and it was four marker pens, uh, which me and the kids were gonna uh, use to color up some models. Um, yeah, I get, yeah, get onto that, Andre. Um, yeah, get onto the customer support and see what they say. See what they say. Sorry to hear about that. I, I really am. I know how frustrating that is. Um, and I, when I mean, you see in a minute, we'll see you, you'll you find out why I'm being really looking forward to certain parts turning up. Um, so, yes, let's move on. Oh, wow, that sucks, Rich. Your XUAV took three weeks to the day from Banggood. Uh, my the mini Talon took like I think it was four days, and but that did come from the EU warehouse, uh, and it turned up in almost I only use the terms almost perfect conditions. One of the wings had a bit of a nick uh, in it, and I don't know how that happened because the box looked pretty good to be honest, and it was a proper thick uh, tri triple skin box as well. Uh, and then the XUAV clouds that took. I think about 12, 13, maybe even 14 days to turn up here. It did what well, it felt like forever, uh, put it that way. Uh, and it also felt like forever trying to put them all together as well. I think we took about 14 hours, 12, 14 hours all in uh, just to get it to the flight line. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. 
Your MT took 36 hours to arrive. That is crazy. That's crazy. Right, on to the next one, which I've just been in opened up. Now, these are still on offer. Um, let's see if I've got a tab open for these. Yes, I do. Uh, these are still on offer. Um, apparently, they had, had a headline price of $40, which personally I'm going to call out BS on. Uh, but let's put that aside for a moment. Uh, why are these of interest? Let me get one of these open so we can have a quick nose. They are really, really well packaged. There's no way that's breaking in the mail, uh, that's for sure. Uh, you get the little wires which will take out. You also do get the uh, traditional dipole antenna, which I'm sure, like the rest of you, uh, you file in the filing cabinet. Uh, but... Let me put that up on the screen. So that, so you can see that little one there. So really straightforward, standard Warren. So if you've ever had a little video transmitter like one of these before, the power lead which you get with them does fit them. But the caveat is, I don't know if you just spotted this, is the antenna mounting is in the middle. Normally they're off to one of the, I think they're over on this side here. Now the reason why I like these ones, and again, please focus. There we go. Can you see you've got the little LED LCD screen on the back? That means is that when you turn up on the flight line and then you've got somebody there which has no idea what channel they're on and you need to go and change the channel. Instead of having to go out and find a tiny little screwdriver and then ch check on your phone to see what pins you need to switch over. You know this tiny little dipole switches on the, the little dip switches on the back. Uh, with this one, uh, you just mash the button and you can change it, change your channel, and you can change your band. Also, crucially, the, what this is why I went, I've, I've actually had three of these and I've been in this bag already, uh, is that you can switch between 25 milliwatt, 200 milliwatts, and 600 milliwatts. So uh, obviously, depending upon the legalities in your country, uh, what you could do is maybe use the 25 milliwatts if you're doing some indoor flying. Uh, so maybe you've got this on a small quad, well, obviously, you, a fair size quad to be fair uh, or a model which you're flying indoors maybe you're doing flying indoors in a gym uh, you use 25 milliwatts for that otherwise you'll swamp all your buddies out and plus it'll get lots of bouncing off the walls and things like that 200 milliwatts if you're out just in a field and fun and then 600 milliwatts if you're going a little bit further so I do like those they are really really straightforward uh, as long as you can push a button uh, you're away and the button is quite matte proof on the back and I like the ones with the push buttons and the little screen is because you don't have to remember that the first three pins always need to be up and then channel eight is when they're all down and channel one is when they're all up or the reverse that I can't really remember that that's all I remember one is down at the bottom and eight is all at the top I think so yeah we got three of those at twelve not twelve dollars ninety nine bargain Absolutely bargain for the switchable, and that's the key point on those. Uh, let's have a quick look what's going on in the chat. Uh, Rich says, got scunny, uh, sunny sky motors in a week from EU. Happy days. Uh, at least the clouds didn't have... Oh, yeah, Rich, so it's a cloud you bought. Yeah, did you see the state of my box? The One of the brackets which goes on to hold the wings on uh, had got knocked out of the sellotape and had gone round, and we had a... Uh, a wing imprint on the top, which I've tried to get out, but unfortunately, uh, it's still there. On the bright side, Banggood did refund me $30 for that. And I think all in, uh, it had a headline price of $180. I knocked off $36 in some points from Banggood, and then they gave me another, gave me another $30 off for the absolutely atrociously packaged box uh, and the, for the damage which I had, because there was some other damage to it as well. Um, so, am I happy? Yeah, totally. I've got a 1.8 meter wingspan model, um, which has obviously got a bit of a dent on there, and it, there's no getting away from that. But all in, I'm kind of happy to be honest. So, happy days. Right, uh, Kev says, getting close to 7 for <laughs> Alex, we have to go to bed. <laughs> Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Sunday says, love to see one of those Ishin VTX uh, on the power test uh, and the RFX Explorer. Apologies, I don't have any experience on that one uh, at all. Uh, Andrew says, the VTXs went back up to full price just for a few days before coming back down again. That's good. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, Zedtune says, don't trash the original antenna. 
there is one SMA plug plus one 5.0 gigahertz uh, whip uh, for a micro quad in there. Uh, don't worry, I've got lots more in the box. I, I mean, like I've got like a handful of them. Um, it's no, it's, honestly, it's no odds to me. And realistically, I'm not going to use them. Uh, to to be a, uh, to be bluntly honest, and they just have literally just been filed up to date. But good call, good call. Uh, Rich says my first. But oh, Rich, were you the chat which bought two of the clouds? And again, I'm just keeping an eye on the chat here as well. Oh, while Rich is coming back to us in the chat, uh, I am going to go on record as saying that these are the best servo leads which I have come across to date. I don't know if you can see those. Uh, I'm sure we have all tried. In fact, that is almost a fair comparison. Let me pull one of these out. So I've bought the 600 millimeter ones. So the 60 centimeters, which is whatever in inches, to be honest. Let's have a quick look at those. Let me grab one of these servos out. And I'll give you a comparison. Now, what I would say, this is an unfair comparison because the wires on these are small, definitely smaller than the others. But I'll try and give you some kind of idea. Is that if I put my hand on there, can you see how thin this top servo wire is? Now compare that to the twisted cables underneath. Yeah, I do like these. Now, um, yeah, those of you which have been in the RC Coffee Chats, you'll, mention, you'll know that I've mentioned these before. I am on now on my, it's got to be like my ninth or 10th bag because I've got two more bags of them here. I've got some more 600s. Oh, I think I must have bought all 600s by the looks of it. Yeah, so I bought two lots of the orange brown. So uh, what's that, Fataba, uh, those ones. And they've got the JR ones or whichever way around they go. Uh, that I could never remember for the color coding. Uh, I do get for a lot of these wires, mainly because with these longer ones, what I do is to imagine that's going out onto wing, like, I tell you what, best way, show you. Literally just been rewiring the Phantom, and I hope that you can see this okay. So on this side, you'll see the wire loom running through there. So I've been and made up my own wiring loom, uh, and what colors have we got on that side? So we've got white, sorry, black and red. So that's positive and negative. We've got white, which is audio, and yellow, which is video. So that will now tell you that that side of the wing, which is the left wing, uh, is for the video transmitter. And then on the opposite side, you'll see that I've also been up, made, up, made myself up another wiring loom. Uh, and then this one, I'm using brown, red, which is a slightly different color red. Uh, yellow, which is the S bus connection, and then white, which is the RSSI connection. And all I've done is just broken up two of those looms uh, and made my own little wiring looms for the wings. What's it take, realistically? 20 minutes, something like all in to make up custom looms in there. And I've cut down because I need to run four wires up to each wing, so I need positive, negative audio and video for the video transmitter. And then in the other wing, <coughs> I need positive, negative. I need uh, the S-Bus connection because that, that's got a vector in there uh, and a RSSI connection as well. So I run four wires out onto each wing and all I do is take one of those servo wires and they, honestly, once you've seen the insides of these, in fact, Kev, I do believe that you've got some of these as well. Um, so if that's right, let us know in the chat because you know, I think you know how good these are. Uh, they're super good quality and all I do is take one run like that. I'll go and take a different color, strip out the white wire in that case uh, and then get that into that loom and then I'll make up my own little custom looms for each of the models. Uh, yes, sorry Kevin uh, Fairgreave. Uh, yeah, if there's 60 centimeters are uh, in restocking, uh, I did buy three lots of those, and I'm sorry to say, I did also buy some more this morning. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Chris says, ooh, the Phantom, yes please. Uh, the Phantom FX61. I, I honestly do feel guilty that I've not spent the time to put a new wiring looms in there uh, and to laminate that model because um, for 
time in the air and miles travelled, like probably cumulatively, the uh, obviously uh, probably it's almost on path to the tech sumos, and I've flown the, I've, the pretty much uh, for the late summer into the autumn. All I flew was pretty much the tech sumo. Uh, that was was like one of the first wings. Well, it was the first wing which I had along with a bonsai. And yeah, the Phantom FX61, absolutely fantastic model. Uh, there are two versions of the Phantom Wing available. Frankly, I don't know what the difference is, uh, but the, different, the difference I do know is that the Phantom version one is about $20 cheaper. I've got a Phantom one. I love my Phantom one. I don't think there's gonna be $20 worth of improvement which they can do in a version two, uh, to be brutally honest. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Andre says, uh, you retwine them with a drill. Uh, n n well, I do it by hand. I'm, I'm kind of like twisting as I go round. I, it, it's kind of like a knack, if that makes sense, is that you twist and you turn. I don't know. Yeah, yeah you're probably right. You should probably retwine them with a drill. That would probably give a more uniform uh, effect, but I have been doing them by hand. Uh, James, yeah. Oh, I did see your link for AliExpress. Uh, the reason why I didn't go for just the servo cable is because it comes with the connectors on the end, like that. And I don't know if those of you which have tried putting those connectors, I haven't got the special tool to put those on, uh, so I normally do it with a pair of pliers. So I love these because if I want to pick, unpick one on either end, I can do that. And then if I do need one of those connectors on the end because I needed to extend it even more, Frankly speaking, all I do is go and choose another one of these, chop it off there and then solder it up because soldering it up is a lot damn easier than trying to work out with those little plugs, especially those ones, uh, if I'm brutally honest. Uh, Leonardo Valentin says, FX61 V2 has removable wings. Uh, no, the, the original uh, V1 had removable wings. It was just two screws. Uh, sorry, two screws and two little um, bolts which you undid and you, you could take the wings off. Uh, I did make one thing the issue with mine is that I did glue my wings on. That does cause a bit of an issue transporting it and it is a bit of a handful. And I also did um, fiberglass the undercarriage uh, or the bottom of the model as well, which was a bit excessive, but put it this way, I've rolled it, never had an issue with it. Um, but yeah. I glued my wings on. It was fine, absolutely fine. Let's have a quick look. Yes, and uh, sorry, Kevin, as well. I've just seen your chat there in the background. Right, on to the next package. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, brilliant. I've been running on. Oh, great. They've sent them. Right, on one hand that's annoying, on the other hand it's not the end of the world. Let me just show you on there. Those are the decent quality XTC connectors. Now I'm sure you, if you're anything like me, uh, you've bought the cheap ones, and I mean like the super cheap ones. Uh, and then once you've used these ones, let me just say what, let me get one of these out and I'll clip it together so you can see what's going on. Once you see the quality on these ones, number one, it's a decent quality grade plastic. So it doesn't end up melting when you put the soldering iron on it, which I think again, Sir Bruce did a video about those a while back. Now I've not stuck that on there properly, but let me just show you that on there. It comes with this little gray retaining clip on the back. And is that good? Come on, focus. There we go. It comes with a little clip on the back. Absolutely fantastic. Yes, they do cost more. I think I've got a tab for those open as well. Yeah. Uh, 20 pairs, so yeah, 20 pairs at $15, uh, they were not cheap, and I did cringe a bit spending $15 just on XT60 connectors. On the flip side, I know they're decent quality ones, they're not going to fall apart when I keep the soldering iron on them for too long, uh, and I also know with the extra little grey plug on the back of them, I know that they're gonna last my models and hopefully they're gonna last your models uh, as well. Uh, Rich says, uh, servo end crimping tool for about $12 on Hobby King, best thing I ever bought. Happy days. Uh, yeah, that's probably the better, better thing. I was just sitting with a tiny little pair of long nose pliers uh, and then just crimp them in. Right, 
I do need to stop talking and get through some mail because I do have a shed load of mail here to say the least. So let's get into the next one. By the way, those of you which just joined us, uh, there is a vote which goes along with uh, this episode and that vote is in the top right hand corner. Uh, and yeah, you can let me know whether you're as addicted to RC as what I am. So, uh, is in here. I've got actually. I know what it is. I know what it's going to be. It's going to be. Yes. Oh no! It's not what I thought it was. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got a pair of tail booms. Now, my, um, Peter, if you're still on, uh, you'll recognise those tail booms. Those are the tail booms for da 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 a micro sky. Hunter, yeah, micro sky hunter, and I also bought two elevator fins. Now, the reason why I bought two elevator fins is the, as I mentioned earlier in the story about mine, is that I have broken mine in two places, so I've got a spare elevator fin. And then you may be wondering, Matt, what are you doing with another elevator fin and another set of booms? Uh, the answer would be for that one is, like I said, I really did feel sad when I broke mine. Uh, and I bought all the parts to make another one. No apologies, it's a great model. That Micro Sky Hunter is definitely going in. The best models for 50 quid. Brilliant, absolutely love mine to bits. Now, uh, you, I wanna make a point. If you look in the video description, uh, you can find the parts or you, if you go onto Banggood, you can buy the model for $50. If uh, In the video description, the links to the individual parts which I bought. Uh, you can save yourself about 25%, something like that, uh, if you buy the parts individually. So if you buy the fuselage, if you buy the wings, the boom, and the elevator fin, uh, it does work out 25% or more cheaper uh, as well. So that is classed as happy days. Uh, let's have a quick look. Peter, you're still there, happy days. Uh, oh, Nibelius. Sorry, I was having a map moment then. So I've got spare parts here from Micro Sky Hunter. Next one, I think this is actually a Hobby King one, which eventually turned up. So we had the, what was it, EF Extra, which turned up. Uh, and at the same time, I remember saying that, oh yeah, I also remember to buy some uh, Blendum tape. Well, three days later, Blendum tape, which is like, it's, let me get one out. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. Uh, again, if you check, if you type in Blendum, so it's actually I've got a link on here uh, to the page. That's the tape there. Now this stuff is absolutely fantastic for elevons or sorry uh, any movable surfaces. So if you've got a white model like the Micro Sky Hunter, for example, uh, is that I put that on the hinges to secure the hinges uh, on the model. I will be using this stuff. Uh, on the Phantom FX61. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Now, uh, it is like a semi-transparent stuff. Uh, I believe it was originally used or uh, designed for the medical industry, so uh, to, to go on skin, so it showed through rather than having a, uh, something which was coloured otherwise. Uh, and then some gifted RC modeler realised it would be fantastic for RC, and he or she was absolutely right. It is brilliant, and I used that on all my um, movable surfaces. Uh, the EF Extra has got it on that one. That model's gonna be trying to flying it at, like literally over 100 miles an hour. I need to make sure that those surfaces are staying, in, staying on. And don't get me wrong, the hinges on that EF Extra were absolutely fantastic, really good quality, like nigh on on par with the FMS Edge 540 kind of grade, um, but I still stuck Blendum on them. I don't want a surface coming off when I'm doing stupid fast speeds, uh, and especially if I'm doing it via FPV, because that's gonna be going in the ground and I'm gonna be experiencing that uh, in, in the goggles, like as you would be. Uh, so the next one, I'll give you a hint. Anybody recognize the icons on there? <laughs> uh, so yes, the national shortage of Goop glue looks like, or goop plumbing, plumbing, plumbing glue uh, has now ended. Uh, so Matt went on um, eBay. Oh, they've upgraded their bottles. We got different bottles. 
Yeah, plumbing. Brilliant. The best stuff for EPP. And if it doesn't melt your Pacific version of EPO foam, the best stuff for EPO foam, it's um, number one, use it outside. It absolutely stinks. The amount of times I've walked into this office in the morning and it's just reeked of goop glue and it's been intoxicating. Um, you definitely want to use this stuff outside. Um, it does set really, really quickly. Uh, like within about 15 minutes, it's pretty much there. Obviously, if you're flying it in the model, you want to go on and leave it overnight. Uh, but it's like a rubberized glue. It is crazy good stuff. So I've got four tubes of that here. Happy days. Uh, I was down to my last tube as well. Down to my last tube. Uh, Sunday says, Matt's got a deal, distributor deal with Goop. <laughs> Oh, honestly, it feels like it in times of the year. I've been through so many tubes of it. Uh, the Twin Zoo is eaten at least one tube of it so far. Um, probably more. Um, yeah, it is my go-to glue, that's for sure. And yes. Uh... Oh, Andrew's saying about Yoohoo Pour. I'm not a big fan of Yoohoo Pour, to be honest. Uh, because mainly because it turns yellow, which makes it look like the model's wet itself. Uh, when it goes off, but on a serious point, with um, Yoohoo Pour, the F22, which some of you may have seen in the Facebook group, again, shameless plug for the Facebook group, there's a link to uh, the Facebook group in the video description for you. Uh, for those of you which have seen the F22, I did use Yoohoo Pour to glue that one together, and the reason why I used Yoohoo Pour uh, is simply because it gave me time. You can leave it for 20 minutes before sticking the parts together because it's like a contact adhesive. Uh, and absolutely, yeah, perfect glue for that choice. Uh, it is what it is. Ah, brilliant. Like I said, I was disappointed about me breaking the Micro Sky Hunter a couple of days back. No apologies, it is a brilliant model. Uh, so I've got, so that fuse is for that one. And I've got two more boxes to get through. So we're almost at the end of today's session. Uh, Peter says, what size goop do you get? I get the big ones, if that makes sense. There's a link to those in the video description. It's the 3.7, uh, it's the 109.4 milliliters, which I think is 3.7 uh, ounces. Uh, so, yeah, I do go go for the bigger tube, it, yeah, and it costs about 10 quid as well, but it is, like, the best glue, honestly, the best glue which I've come across so far. Um, rubberized, it can take a smack with the EP, oh, look at that box. Let's hope that's alright, uh, apparently, oh, I hope it's alright. Yeah, that's it for the box. I need to take a nose at these wings. Uh, as you may have guessed, these might be some wings for a micro sky hunter. But I'm just going to open it up to see what the state of them is. Oh, yeah. So we've got a dent on one of the elevons, and we've got a dink on one of the wing tips. Now, in reality, that's going to bend that all right that's fixed and the other one is who's it fault here is it bang good or is it the mel system i'm pretty sure bang good wouldn't have stuck it in a box which was damaged so unfortunately it's in the transit which is a bit of a pain oh a massive tip for you those of you which when you put these uh, together is that when you put them together, put that the ring the right way round, uh, is that I also ran two extra strips of carbon uh, strips across these because you get loads of carbon fiber, well, glass fiber strips in here. But can you see the issue in there? Yeah, it's great that you stick a spar down the middle so you get one join in there. But on mine, I also ran two extra spars, one up here at the top and then I put another one down here at the bottom. Uh, and I can tell you, with a model which has done over 100 miles an hour in the sky, uh, it's been fine. So, oh, that's what I did on my last one. That's what I'm going to do uh, on the new one. And the last bag, which is also a box, is... <laughs> do you want to play snapses? 
more wings. Basically, I bought a spare set of wings, a spare fuselage. Um, so I'm sorry, I bought all the parts for another model, and then I bought all the spares for my current one as well. So literally today, the missus was um, she's laminated a new Micro Sky Hunter fuselage. Uh, the wings are a bit iffy because I have hit too many trees with it right now. Uh, so yeah, like I said, Micro Sky Hunter, totally rate it. And um, for what was 37, $36 or less, um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant model. Fantastic for FPV. You can do crazy stuff with it. So let's have a quick look. Uh, yes, Andrew, you did see H laminating the Micro Sky Hunter fuselage uh, this afternoon. It is finished now. I will be um, laminating that and I'll probably end up laminating, no, sorry. With the wings, I don't laminate the Micro Sky Hunter wings. What I'll do, and a big tip for yours, so Peter, I know that you've got one of these, uh, just some normal, just normal sellotape, run some sellotape along this leading edge, so half on the top, half on the bottom, uh, and I can tell you that I have clipped trees with that before, uh, and that's all it's left, it's a tiny little dink uh, on the leading edge, so something which takes a couple of minutes just to do to put some sellotape along there, does work really, really well. Uh, and I know the wings on my other one are looking pretty ropey now, so I will revisit that on my existing one. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just running as that. Uh, yes, uh, technically I now have three uh, hunters here, uh, or the Micro Sky Hunters. I do like that model a lot. I know some other people don't like them. Uh, I've seen other people review the Micro Sky Hunter, and also, uh, to be honest, I was a little bit worried that it was going to be like really, really noisy. Uh, and then I stuck a 22, sorry, a Sunny Sky X2216 1250 kV motor on the back, uh, which is also the same motor which you stick uh, on a mini Talon uh, with an 8 by 6 inch prop. Stick that on 4S, and you've got to be up. Uh, and well, I'll. All I'm going to say is that you'll be above 60 miles per hour, probably 80, maybe a little bit more uh, on 4S with a decent battery, uh, 30 amp ESC and crazy. And the other thing, super quiet, super quiet. The first setup I had, which was the, uh, not with those, those fire motors, but with the DYS SC2205s, uh, absolute brilliant, absolute brilliant in the sky. Uh, almost like guaranteed eight minutes of craziness with it now, uh, but those were really, really noisy uh, with the bigger motor uh, and obviously a bigger battery pack. I'm getting about the same amount of flight time, but it's much, much more quieter in the sky, which is that for those of you which have got um, neighbors around you which you don't want to annoy or um, maybe some older generation of pilots at your flying club, which don't fully appreciate the ear screeching noise of a high KV motor, uh, is that it will keep those on your side because between those booms, you can fit an eight inch propeller uh, on the back uh, for it. Uh, Andrew suggests you could also run some whacker or strimmer weed uh, down the leading edge. Yeah, totally, you could do that too. Uh, for me, it was just, I just used sellotape. That did it, and again, if I'm gonna hit something hard, then I'm gonna probably hit it quite hard. Um, yeah, absolutely. The wing looks twisted. That's the only one which I took out. No, believe it or not, it's fine, it's fine. Sorry, I didn't, who just mentioned that one? Um, James, yeah, no, honestly, it's fine. So, time for me to wrap up. Thank you ever so much for joining me for this evening's live RC mail session. Remember, the reason why I'm sharing these live sessions with you is so that you know what's good. If you know of a model or uh, something as simple, and I mean this, I genuinely do mean this, if you, if you know of a product which is good as those XTC connectors, it could be anything from an XTC, XT60 connector to a known good motor, which I don't know if that one's gonna be good or not, um, do let us know over in the Facebook group. Um, I genuinely do mean that because I'm still very much new to this hobby. Yes, I, well, actually, it's gonna, it's gonna be a year in March, which is kind of like scary uh, for me, uh, is that I only started flying in March of last year, 
And this is the thing, we don't know what's good and we don't know what's bad, which is what I was gonna mention earlier, that is the Esheen, whatever it was, DVR 03. Right, I, I need to do a full review on this one, but I can give you a heads up right now. The recorded video quality, crap. The light handling, crap. The, it gets hot. It, it's like the verse, it's the first one we've seen of these now. Hopefully they fix out the issues. Oh, and it's also laggy as well. Something which I didn't pick up last, uh, the other day. Uh, I've had a play around with it here this afternoon. Don't buy them, the DVRO freeze. They will be fine, that, by the way, let me put this into um, perspective. Uh, if you're flying a model airplane and you're not doing anything crazy with it, so you're not like sticking a stupidly big motor on a micro sky hunter and then trying to fly fast as possible through trees, uh, it will be fine. So if you're gonna stick it on a glider or a slower paced model, it will be great. There'll be plenty of airflow over the top of it. The latency, you just won't notice, okay? And it's nice that you can get some video recording off there and that's not particularly good, but it's better than recording the DVR from the goggles or a separate DVR recorder. But reality, those of you which are flying micro quads or smaller quads, there's so many better quarter cameras out there. TX02, TX03, uh, MC01, all fantastic little all-in-one FPV cameras. But that one, I think I'm gonna write this one off as just being like their first attempt at getting it right. They've just basically crammed too much in there and it's laggy and the quality is not great. Fail this time. Maybe they're gonna do a version 04. Maybe things will get better. And like I said, I'll do a proper review on that one. But yeah, the, the honest answer that that one is it's crap. Um, it would, it'll would be fine on a model airplane, which I'm not flying very fast, put it that way. Anything else, I, I wouldn't use it myself. If I'm uh, honestly, uh, if I'm 100% um, honest with you, it's not great at all. Uh, Peter says, how do I connect my TX03 on my Sky Hunter? Dead simple, Peter. Right, if I remember correctly, the TX03 requires anything from three point some volts to five volts, okay? So you will have, a, those connectors are called lossy connectors. If you, get this the right way around. Sorry, it keeps picking up my face and it won't focus. There we go, those little connectors, okay? Peter, what I would do uh, is, on Banggood, you can buy a little Beck for two pounds, just over two pounds, it's about three dollars, a little five volt Beck, and I would solder up one of those and then use, uh, put one of those connectors on the end of it uh, and do it that way. Uh, you do need to go a little bit wary. Uh, you could use the ESC, positive and negative, but I wouldn't suggest that because the TX03, especially on the 200 milliwatts um, setting, does eat quite a bit of current. Uh, and of course, that is gonna be current capacity which will be taken away from your receiver. Uh, you'll also be taken away from your servos too. So I would, uh, Peter, I'd definitely go for a, de a dedicated back. Uh, which if you give me one moment and I will go and find it for you. Uh, give me a second. Because these are the ones which I know are good. Uh, five volts. And I know they're good because I've used them in, in all my slope stories and I've used them in my other models as well. And I'm just trying to find them. There. There we go. So, Peter, I'll stick that in the chat for you. That's the ones which I use. And by the way, those of you which want to see which one I'm using, uh, it's those. Uh, they don't put out like, what well, they're rated for free amps. Um, they're great, they're cheap, $2.53. So like two quid, bargain. Um, I've got four spare in a box because I know they're great for situations like that. But you will need, if you want to keep a connector on it, you will need to put a lozzy de, uh, Mel lozzy connector on there or just solder directly onto the wires and do it that way. So Peter, I hope that helps sir. Uh, Paul, yes, apologies, a little bit late to the party. I am about to wrap up right now. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, <laughs> right, let me answer Andrew's question in a second. If you have any questions about any of the products which you've seen here tonight, 
please just ask in the comments section underneath this video. All of these items were bought out of my own money for my own abuses. Like I said earlier, if you found a good product, uh, whether it's in Banggood or any of the other sites, please do share it in the Facebook group. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is because collectively, us as a community, we know what's good and we also know what's bad. So if there's been like horrific products, which you wouldn't suggest to anybody else that you would use, uh, do let us know. And the same is, is that if you do find really cool worthwhile products like those XT60 connectors, for example, or a micro Sky Hunter, do let us know. I genuinely do mean that. Um, for me, this is like cheating. I, I, I genuinely mean that. How many, if you think how much knowledge I've, I've, I personally, and the same for you, been able to glean uh, over the last year from watching YouTube episodes, chatting in forums, think how much that would have taken at just that, if you only ever went to your flight club and you only went there like once per week, it would like take you a decade uh, and then the information which you'd find would probably be out of date. Uh, this is one of the beauties of YouTube. This is one of the major reasons behind why I'm sharing what I've got in my mail. These things, they're all bought out of my own money. So if they were <laughs> rubbish, I would tell you, but no, those are great. I really do like them. Um, that DVR camera, not too good. Uh, and these, and again, I'm really looking forward to ragging the nuts off these. Uh, those DYS motors, do not know. They do look, let's be fair, they do look pretty cool. But how they perform, nobody knows. Well, I don't know. So, and if anybody knows what the, if anybody's seen any thrust tests on these uh, DYS fire ones, uh, do let me know in the Facebook group because I would be really, really curious because uh, I will be sticking these on 3S, possibly 4S as well. Um, and I'll choose a prop which I think is about right, uh, which will probably be 50-45 or 50-50. I may even stick tri-blades on them and these will be go on the front of the Twinzu from Team Legit. Uh, there was a point which Andrew uh, put in the chat here as well. Uh, Heady2008 says, uh, you could celebrate your anniversary by buying a few models. How about a nice warbird? Um, unfortunately, I do think I annoyed the uh, chat, one of the chaps from Hobby King a couple of days back uh, because I did label, and apologies, if, and by the way, big apologies if you are a big warbird lover. Um, I'm afraid they're just not for me at all. Um, unfortunately, I did kind of label uh, all uh, warbirds as being dirty wing droppers uh, or tip stallers because that's just been my experience. Uh, every warbird which I've flown to date has been a dirty little tip staller. So you know what I mean, you, you're banker model around like so and if you don't have enough pace on it, it goes Wah! and tries to commit suicide. I can't be dealing with a model which wants to commit suicide every five seconds. Uh, so. Warbirds, I've got a Fock Wolf on top of one of the cupboards. Am I gonna fly it? Probably not. Probably not is the honest answer. So yeah, good question on there, celebrate. I could celebrate my anniversary by flying a Warbird into a cement mixer. That would be a good anniversary. Um, just not my cup of tea. And by the way, don't take offense to that if you love Warbirds. I appreciate that there's multiple different parts of this hobby. If, if you've got an, av uh, an aviation background, then warbirds are gonna be so up your street and everything which I've just said about is gonna be completely slanderous. And that's great, because you probably hate FPV. And you probably really don't like something which is that small and goes that fast, like a micro sky hunt. That's not gonna be your cup of tea. And that's great, there's so many different threads in this hobby. Happy days, happy days. Uh, yes, Chris, Micro Sky Hunter bits, uh, $37. Nuts, why do you think I've got spares here? And I'd, I've got spares here because I was upset when I stuffed mine in. I genuinely was, I went home sad that day. And when I, when I remember driving home and it was about a 20 minute drive. No, actually, you got stuck in traffic. So it was a half hour drive on the way home. And I was thinking about when I get home, I'm going on Banggood. And I'm going to buy too many spare parts. This is the evidence that I think that model is good. I've been and bought too many spare parts. So I'm going to have spares. I think they're absolutely brilliant models. So those are definitely going in there. Uh, so a quick look. Uh, what's going on in the chat? 
Um, give you sp- uh, Camel, oh yeah, Camel, I can only pin one post at the top of the Facebook group, but very, very good suggestion. Uh, Skyris says, Matt, what's the biggest 3S pack which you can get in the Micro Sky Hunter? So, realistically, okay, no, all right, the max biggest pack which you can fit in the Micro Sky Hunter is about a 2200 3S pack. Okay, you could probably squeeze a bigger one in there, but just be aware... And by the way, those of you which are building yours, in here, this little tray, okay, you want to push that tray as far back as you dare because you want this space, if I turn it around that way, it'll make more sense. You want as much space in here. What I find with mine, the, the, the only negative which I can say about the Micro Sky Hunter is, and I've, I've fixed this on the new fuse, is that you need the motor out a bit because the CG is too far forward. So. You could put a 2200 uh, 3S pack in there. You'd probably also fit one of, uh, well, it's a fair old size. Sorry, I don't have a ruler's hand. It's a fair old size, so you can fit quite a big battery in there. But the reason why you wouldn't want to fit an, um, a big battery in there is because what I found with mine is that where well, with a 1300 3S and a 1300 4S, you have to tuck it right back in so it hits that plywood base there to get to hit CG, especially if you're anything like me and have stuck a run cam hour plus on the nose. So you've already got quite a bit of nose weight on the nose, so you get a decent uh, picture quality. Uh, then that the, the downside to that is you can't put a bigger battery in it. Um, and to be a, to be fair, you can you could of course run this with uh, a bigger battery and stick some elevator trim in it, uh, but it would be rather nose heavy. Um, you could probably definitely do some medium range FPV, FPV with it, but the reason why I'm a little bit hesitant is because look at the thickness on that cord. Remember that conversation which we were chatting about earlier about wing cords? Okay, thicker wing cord, floatier model. That's the basics of it. Thinner wing cord, faster model. Now that also does mean because it's not very deep, the cord on it is depth on it, the cord uh, isn't very big. Uh, these do sink in height, so the second you take your uh, thumb off the throttle, it will drop uh, in the sky very, very quickly. So, yeah. Or as James says, just stick a whacking great big motor on the back. Yeah, Sunny Sky X22 16, 1250 kV, 8x6 prop. Brilliant combo. Not obviously not the most efficient combo, um, but plenty of speed, like most speed, which would satisfy most of us here uh, and not very much noise at all which keeps the neighbors happy uh, as well let's have a quick look um, good way to get it past the wife <laughs> brilliant uh, Trulis FPV uh, I bought my first wing the DW rainbow v2 wing can I put FPV gear on it yes uh, you can uh, head, uh, Andrew's just hit the nail on the head there is a build video like I was asked to start doing build videos, right? So I did build videos and it's the whole, pretty much the whole build. Uh, and that episode for the uh, Rainbow Wing is an hour long. Okay, I think it's an hour and 10 minutes. So you can literally sit there with the model and then follow me along doing it. Uh, to answer your question about the FPV, yeah, of course you can. There is one other thing which I wanna point out which with your Rainbow Wing, because I've got the little 600 one here. On your, but that's the that's, that's the different one. This is slightly smaller one. Uh, on uh, your, I mean, it's right. Trueless FPV. What you'll want to do is on the bottom, okay, get a carbon rod and right across, right across these joints because on the uh, that on the other wings they do crack here and here. Okay, putting a carbon spar all the way across. Ideally, on the bottom and on the top will help tame it from cracking, okay? Um, but then also, don't forget, that one cost me $16. The rainbow wing probably cost you, I don't know, $16, $20 at worst case. It's cheap as chips. If you smash this up, are you gonna cry about it? Probably not. You're gonna then move on to maybe a different wing as well. So I've still got mine, she's sat up there on the side. It's great fun. Great fun on 2S, by the way, uh, as well. Uh, are the parts also listed? Yes, they are. Uh, they're on the other video for the um, 
Rainbow Wing. Just type in Rainbow Wing on my YouTube channel, uh, you'll find it and you'll see all the parts which I used on mine. Uh, and again, I'm very open about my mistakes. I had grand plans on that uh, wing of putting a whacking great big motor on the back or maybe putting a nice big EDF on it. Completely shot. The best setup for that rainbow wing, not the one, the little 600 one, which I showed then, the other one, uh, is a 2S motor. Uh, and all the parts are in the video description on that one for you. Uh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So on that note, uh, Skyris says standoffs for the motor then. Uh, no, what I actually did on mine is that, I don't know if you can see, there's a slight, I need to move my head out of the way because the camera also picks it up. There's an indent in there, is that I bolt, I put more plywood uh, in this back little section back here uh, on mine. And that's boosted it out, well, I don't know, eight mils, quarter of an inch. Hopefully that gets the CG back on the new ones. And if that doesn't work, there was a brilliant tip. I can't, I think it might have been Nigel uh, in the Facebook group. He suggested using uh, nuts. So if you don't have any standoffs, like I don't, uh, is that put four nuts to get you out. And then that brings the motor back even more. And on the bright side, ironically, it adds more weight to the back of it as well. So that's in, in this model's instance, getting a little bit more weight at the back is actually a good thing, which means you can run more battery uh, in the front. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Trudis FPV says, do you have the V1? Is it almost the same as the V2? Yes, the only difference between the version one and the version two is in version two, they include one more, and it's not even a particularly thick piece of carbon fiber, uh, and they've cut the holes in the elevons for you. That's the only difference between version one and version two. Uh, and also that extra piece of carbon fiber strip which they included with you in the kit isn't long enough. You definitely wanna put another piece like from all the way across the back of the wing uh, to give it some extra uh, strength as well. Uh, Peter says they're restocking the back on Banggood. I'm sorry to hear that. That's, I, I've left that on my screen. They are really, really good. That's the ones which I use there. Let me have a quick look, see if I can spot one of the other ones which I've used. Again, uh, that one there. I'll pop that one in the uh, chat for you. Peter, that one is bigger. Okay, uh, on a scale of one to, it, it's about 30% bigger, but I've used those as well. They're fine, and it's a few cents more as well. They're great, so that's what I would use. Um, you could, if you really, really wanna go out and get flight, do try it off the ESC line, uh, but do go and check the rating on your ESC. Look, if I'm completely honest, go and look for one which says 4A on there for four amps, so you might have to put a bigger ESC in there to get a higher Beck uh, rating on it. Uh, you could try it with a three amp one. You should, if it was me, I'd try it with a three amp one if I didn't have a spare Beck, okay? Uh, but that said, a four amp back in the ESC would be more than adequate for that one. Just be aware you might get some lines on the FPV if it's coming straight off the ESC as well. So Peter, I hope that helps. Right, on that topic, it's time for me to wrap up. But thank you for joining me here this evening. Quite a bit of mail to get through. Like I said, I've the, the, the one thing which I went in there after was one of the video transmitters for a model which I was working on. Uh, and there was a box which turned up which was a Runcam Eagle. Desperately been waiting for that one to come in for to go on a different model onto the Duda. I think that's about right. I'm pretty sure I stuck it on there. I can't see which one it is, but uh, I'm 99% sure, sure I stuck it on that one because it was going to be going mentally fast. Um, do share your experiences, whether they're good or bad, about these items, whether it's a survey which costs like three dollars or maybe it's a model or a motor like these i bought these because i they look pretty damn cool my personal experience with dys motors has been nothing short of absolutely fantastic looking at these they do look amazing but how it performs nobody knows so please do share your experiences uh, with stuff which you've been bought recently and again you can do that either in the comments section underneath this video uh, or you can do it over in the facebook group uh, an absolute shameless plug for the Facebook group, you can join literally well over 500 cool pilots like myself uh, and everybody who else has been in here with the live chat this evening. Um, wow, 
what a community what a community of such cool people um the link to that is in the in the video description click the link press the join button in the top right hand corner and one of us will pick up your join request and just come in and say hello uh if you've had a unscheduled landing recently posting your uh, unscheduled landing in there there's um there's been quite a few of those lately and some of them have been mine unfortunately so with that said it really is time for me to go now i'd like to say a massive thank you for joining me for this evening's mail section uh, session those of you who missed the rc or uh, sorry uh, those of you which normally turn up for the rc coffee chats obviously i'd like to extend my apologies uh, for missing that this morning that's the first rc coffee chat which i've missed because i've overslept uh, yesterday i slept for 11 hours i went to bed at uh, at seven o'clock at night and i think i got up at something like at eight o'clock in the morning uh, absolutely zonged out and my mobile phone which is actually sat up there on the wall um it was i left it in the office so apologies i just slept through I slept through good, and to be frank and honest, I enjoyed it. I needed that sleep. So with that said, I will see you live tomorrow morning for tomorrow's RC Coffee Chat. Lots of stuff for us to catch up with. Uh, give you an early heads up. Uh, there will be no RC Coffee Chat on Wednesday of this week. Uh, I've got um, some, I, I need to go and travel on Wednesday, so there'll be no RC Coffee Chat first thing in the morning. Uh, and also to give you like a little hint, okay, Thursday, it wouldn't be unfair to label the first day as maiden day. Uh, we've got four, possibly five models which are going out for a maiden uh, on Thursday. And I will let you into a little hint. Ah, I'll just run over something. One of them is what Andrew's been working on. Uh, and it doesn't. she doesn't look her best right now. That, ladies and gents, is called Happy Days. That is a Seagull Edge 540, uh, which has been converted to electric, not by me, by Andrew, uh, which is Heady 2008. So Andrew, a big hat tip, sir. A little bit of uh, work left on this one, and we'll get her out flying. Um, and I've probably just been an upset every uh, IC guy out there, because that is an IC to an electric conversion, which we've done on there. Uh, I do have a massive great big motor on the front uh, and it will be running on 6S. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So on that note, I really am going now. Thank you ever so much for joining me this evening. I really do appreciate it. If you've enjoyed tonight's live unpackaging, which unfortunately, well, just spotted it an hour and 20. I do apologize, well, no apologies. It took me that long to get through that lot. Um, if you have enjoyed, uh, this evening's live mail session do me a favor press the thumbs up any questions about anything which you've seen please just ask there is no such thing as a daft question that's something which i i made a business around that motto there is no such thing as a daft question so if you have a question about anything which you've seen or i think rc related the facebook group get in there there is just so much knowledge and experience available to you and available to me. I ask that of questions in there. It's okay. Brilliant. So on that note, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining me. It's time for me to go. Cheerios. Come on, mouse. I'm trying to get my mouse back. It's gone to sleep. Wiki. Right. Cheerios. <laughs>